So uh, I'm going to read from a project called um, The Empty Form Goes All the Way to Heaven. And uh, that's a phrase from a talk by Agnes Martin. And so these poems are uh, largely about um, illness and are kind of in dialogue with her thinking and writing and um, also her painting. Um, all the titles are taken from her her writing. Um, I don't know. A lot of them are sort of sculptural or visual, so they kind of take uh, how you might read it is kind of up to you. So I'm sort of being bossy because this is verbal. I have to choose a way for you <laughs> to hear it. Um, but a lot of them are more indeterminate in terms of how you might go about putting the text together. So if it sounds more or less disjunctive, it may. <laughs> <laughs> there are two endless directions, in and out. Afternoon, cloud cover, alter symmetries, brief virtue. Trellis and shadow, classic image. Illness posits it as a question. Too late tang dishes. Will mind or body, one flowering, one empty, be the first fugitive clarity of a day's gray scale study? Some of them I'll show you what they look like, not that. With these rectangles, I didn't know at the time exactly why. Old tin tub, soapy water tilts over. Its rim hits nice image, linoleum for nausea. How small, washing hot, my body. One end has become to the other. I remember again. My mother poured warm water over. This feels like show and tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and I've cut turtle. <laughs> <laughs> Defeated, you will stand at the door of your house and welcome the unknown. Chronic illness, chronic non narrative, even the public health clinic's waiting room, more gestural than temporal. Eventually, the surface gets interesting affect. To wait the purling of signature events like the calm after vomiting, the sum of a knitter's dropped stitches, a continual doing undone in which the assembled material dissembles without voice. I mean, illness has none. I speak on behalf of what expels me. Barren orchid, gl slumped, glossy, monthly, stained public fabric, patient number 01719067, uninsured, no other place to go. I had to bring my body. If you don't like chaos, you're a classicist. <laughs> Atop a hundred foot pole, I take a step forward everywhere. What is the ideal state of illness? This dualist feeling of dispersal does it want concentrating to attain anything? Warmth, thought, at root, transparent, consciousness diminished, then distance lingers, my whole body in the ten directions. If you like it, you're a romantic. Like luck lilts, first toward lurk, lack follows as far as symptom. Ill, I attempted a long time to experience diagnosis. But pain is more the way fire is in animal, in its several colors, so at home. And as I 
got into writing these, um, they were partially to accompany, like, trying to figure out what was wrong and going to, trying to navigate healthy San Francisco public health system, which I don't recommend <laughs> if you ever have mm -hmm. to, um, and then trying to get healthcare in other ways. And so I was talking, uh, f friends became really important to me as a form of support. So some of these are dedicated to friends who helped, whose writing and or discussions about illness and how to deal with it helped. So this is for Norma Cole. Defeated, you will perhaps go a little bit further. I awake to headache as to the phrase, always already. Stress, unstress, unstress, stress, unstress, mind. Meanwhile, caught on the desire to see what I have most of itself without need is lack of an illustrative image. So I build with it, crow feathers, saturated black as fuel coal, between her hands on the wet sidewalk, the healer makes a bird's worth, my skull a page, scattered, scored with folds to teach it to open, thinking screen, a paper window, twilight outside, pictorial the pond beneath the pines, collects signatures for the rain. And that's one. Some of them I just think are pretty not a particularly rigorous way to structure a poem. <laughs> uh, neither objects nor space, not time, not anything, no forms. On the bus, I think a word changes as it enters a new discourse about her perfection, freed from received ideas and responsibilities for about four blocks. Stripped to its core, it's made perfect until I begin to hate it. But a word might choose to change itself. In the drawings I love, outside the realm of perspective, she leaves evidence, a line that constructs a system of process, fraying, continually escapes perfection, the grid's edge, a kind of found quality persisting like leftover math. A word might choose its medium, her forms suggest graphite over a light acrylic wash, a counter rhetoric, emptiness as an outer limit, or dots of color, or graffiti scratched into the bus window. The hand-drawn existence makes a thing useful. Incidental non-existence makes it work, serves as a frame, the impossible patterns of life. Look between the rain, the drops are insular. To pass through a downpour and to stay dry, I have to choose the right image. That's emptiness. To center between rest and pain as between two teeth on a gear, I'll hollow out for my mind to lock on the thought like a gourd to hold water. The point is to pour out caught by nothing. And this is for my friend Francis Richard. Because they had that brief moment where the, um, I'm not going to remember the gap people. The Fishers. The Fishers. The fishers. They had the Fisher <laughs> Club, thank you. And like the people who exploited child labor yeah. buy a lot of beautiful art. <laughs> um, so, I was going to meet my friend at that exhibit thinking those things, but also thinking about they had a room at the Agnes Martins and I'd never seen them before, so I felt slightly guilty, <laughs> <laughs> but went nonetheless. I happened to be thinking of the innocence of trees and then at the museum I saw Night Sea. I saw the poem as partial knowledge blue-green grid framed in gold leaf, an excerpt implying more than it makes the visual field, water's tension over it. it leaves itself unfinished at the point just prior to spillage at its several edges where the eye seeks the grid essentially kintsugi, beauty 
the way toward closure that is not my face, cleaving to injury, soldered in gold, turning away. Here, I turn toward you. I lay down my gaze as one lays down one's weapons, mm. which is actually not Agnes Martin, and I'm misquoting it. It's like Lacan misquoted from an essay about Agnes Martin. <laughs> we'll just say she said it. <laughs> and <laughs> this one, because you know, she's so Lacanian, that Agnes. I lay down my gaze as one lays down one's weapons. The ideal hurt. I couldn't desire. I couldn't experience health without being ill, wanting my old self back. I don't know how to read this. Wandering away, not thinking, not planning, giving up everything, not striving or caring, not me anymore, is a discipline. Someone sang, always in voiceover. Then I drew a picture of, I drew a picture, the lyric, I drew it of the lyric. I drew it so I could point to it, so I could correct it. When I gave up, I felt a lot better. And this is for Netanyahu. But I realized what I liked was the horizontal line. The ointment tin turns dear as a letter unopened, just opened, becomes a figure for the pivot between potential and scarcity. Lavender, a scent I like, because I can get in there and rest clean in a crease of correspondence. The writing fills the space as drawing wood. Hours without words I can't form, space can't hold, contour my body, anything interior never empties of what it has to do. Ache wavers in the tin tub where also I've bobbed for apples until my face hurt. And hunger can't urge me, a child sitting in snow to open my mouth. I also, part of this experiment was, A, I was feeling bad, so I tend to write really long poems, and I hadn't been writing poems this short, and I got really excited about it, because <laughs> they could get more, you could get more plastic on the page, it seemed to me, than in a longer text. So the more I drew that line, the happier I got. <laughs> Language returns like Li Ho on his donkey. Wrote one line per scrap he'd bag and shake out at day's end to make human and earthen one horizon. Poetry, some of patience forged in heat. Loose barb, tip broken, cracked red. It sliced through flesh once. Then I painted the two rectangles. Western window, eastern window, sick bed between. Illness shares its few virtues with art, pain as anomalous as imagination, not being of or for anything. Even language lacks the quality of their solitude Pure process, like our illnesses, mostly the mystery of why one window opens slowly, why one window remains locked. I was raised Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's not the title. She wasn't Agnes, that is a good title. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's actually like, that'll be on my gravestone. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone will be like, oh. <laughs> Except for the people who are like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we think that at last our feet are on the right path and we will not falter or fail. Sometimes I feel very why me about it. Very Christian, I mean. I'm convinced. While I wait, I read, I believe suffering interpreted correctly for weeks returning to one book as if could be really helpful to make a medicine of its vocabulary, as if a certain diction could help only if I'd made of it a charm through use. In On Light, I read, matter cannot be emptied of form. Form is light itself. At first, it seemed awful to be ill without purpose. Now I have lumen, enough to have nothing and that. Not to know, but to go on. White underpainting floats up through, milky as ringing, darker colors it carries, just washed glue brushes over the sink. As water floats paper before saturation, waiting as the color reveals its inks of what draws nearer without touching. This is for my friend, Carrie Webster. I love Agnes. There is a bare spot on the ground. The best possible weed for that environment will grow. Hmm. Like, great, I guess. <laughs> Public health clinic, squeaky, cheap chair. I open the book and Lao Tzu says, knowing how to endure is wisdom. Patient at root means each word turns flat to suffer its definition in grainy anxiety. Both long suffering taints my waiting and one undergoing medical treatment, a 14th century Christian word. Study to be patient in suffering counsels Jesse the phlebotomist, de imitatione Christe, needs only two sticks, where study means then the five vials seek to be helpful one by one grow warm, and eyes run of rhymes, ruby, beauty, rudolent, gauze and two band-aids in the crook of my arm. I leave the clinic dizzy with such wisdom. My blood's book endures. This is for Hua Wen. We cannot even imagine how to be humble. Dear poem, I give up trying to tell a story, difficult to guard and hard to restrain because I turn God inside out like a sock. It is good to tame the mind. Now I sit on a cushion, void I bend one way, wandering far and alone, intangible, toward alignment, void I bend the other, the one who has let go of gain and loss, toward fatigue, at the bus stop, this body cast away without consciousness, I bend over the curb, nauseous. Nice ass, a tamed mind gives rice to ease, someone says. It is hard to realize at the time of helplessness that that is the time to be awake and aware. A fiction devoid of anything real. First diagnosis. You will die young. Second diagnosis. You will die young and in great pain. A thought keeps creating the mind. Third diagnosis. You will die eventually, claiming it exists. Meanwhile, I lay down. The image was somatic, as it does, 
in her hands, the healer took my head, an egg that won't crack. She helped thought through heat, thick as wool felt, reach my mind. It was sorrow without form to sense thinking, no tendons or bones, event as clear as sun behind cloud cover, and as lost to me, metaphor, pure motion, needs the body. Separation is the necessary condition for light. <coughs> this is for Lisa Fishman. So it came to me to carry the abandoned mattress to the attic. A month dead, my father waited hillside in the field surrounding his house. I was glad to see him, to remember when the fathers seemed generic, related, a class of things as uniform as trees are when you don't know their names, a stand of them across the field. I want to say autumn, aspens, the late fathers, blonde as early evening, wind startles their eyes and makes of your name a sail, a boat above roots that rise to stem, that rise to leaf, his door and cornices, his felt hat and mattress, empty, it feels like forever, above the flickering field, the father shrinking far beneath our feet. I pretend I was looking at the blank page. I look into my mind and see nothing. My immediate effort, as in all arts, all opposites dead to the world, is form. Yet, technique is a hazard. Metaphor allows my own illness, my body, to be both the tool I use, language and nest, with much exertion, less weaving, I press and knead, then condensation, the materials beaten, blended, welded together, the meaning of suffering hidden from me. Perhaps now I can really enjoy writing. Perceiving is the same as receiving, and it is the same as responding. Thought begins as small floral bowls. They hold greens, broccoli stalks, chopped kale, against Chinese blue, very dark with a greenish tint. The way a silence falls to each side of the knife's stroke, the colors rhyme softly, and I think I'll miss this when I die. This is how I enter appearances. I'm not, this is for Kathleen Fraser. I'm not trying to describe anything. I'm looking for the perfect space. It's another of the little squares. Kind of stole those from her uh, poem, Wing. Do you all know that poem? It's really amazing. <coughs> Wisdom has said we have a body. We have disaster, rectangle and square. To write is to draw a thinking couple between the mark and its support. Illness narrows the soft grid, a size, the visual field I can walk into, but can't close it. Sufficient difference for all its regularity establishes an opening, a dream of graphite. I almost remember the root of light heavy in my hand. When I cover the square surface with rectangles, it destroys its power. I said I dreamt another grid. I meant I slept upon a fish hook. The mark of human meaning and drew all those rectangles. My body was just like them, a little bit off the square. I said I found the look of order, a comfort and discomfort. I meant you can't get away from what you have to do. Off the path of the true life, the mind says yes and no, making a sort of contradiction. 
That's the way to freedom. It's the last poem. Thank you for your attention. Like a dignified journey with no trouble and no goal, on and on. Dismiss the guardians of the body. How can I own something I am? Iron boat upon the water. The impossible serves as a lamp. Our looking is what we see. It's tension, it's signature. Thank you.